So we're going to talk a little bit about dynamic programming today. There are several techniques that you can use to do dynamic programming. Uh, the one that we're going to look at today is called memoization. This is where the basic idea behind dynamic programming and memoization is that when you ask a method to do some work for you, it keeps track of whether you've ever asked it before. And if you have, it stores all the old answers so that it can look them up quickly instead of having to recalculate each time you ask the same question. So let's look at practically how that would be done. And to do that, uh, we're going to first review some stuff from CSA. And I'm going to create this other method called Fibonacci. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to call this Fibonacci method a bunch of times and test it out to make sure it's working. So I'm going to call, I'm going to loop through all these numbers from 0 to 50, and, 0 to 49, and we're going to print out the Fibonacci values. Now, I don't know how many of you remember Fibonacci from your mathematics or from your CSA, but let's just go over some examples. So here's n, and here's Fibonacci of n. And who can tell me, how, what is the Fibonacci value of 0? Yes, sir. 0. And what is the Fibonacci value of 1? One? 1. And then let's do a couple more. How much is the Fibonacci value for 2? OK. And then what's the Fibonacci value of 3? So in order to get each Fibonacci, you just add the two previous answers together. So now, what would be, Mr. Nikita, the Fibonacci of 4? Three and one more, sir. What would be the Fibonacci of five? And just to make sure we're good here, what would be the Fibonacci of six, Ms. Teleska? Who remembers from CSA when you do recursion, you need two things to have a successful recursive method? Ms. Mila, what are the two things you need? You need the base case and a recursive case. Here, we're going to arbitrarily define these two as the base case. So we're going to say if. Sorry, n is less than 2, return n. OK, so that will be our base cases. And now what I want you to do is finish writing this method to take care of the recursive cases. OK, let's run this puppy and see if we can get the right values to show up. We're going to run into two problems today. We're going to solve both of them. Now, you notice that it whizzed through the first 40, and now you see that it's starting to slow down. Is there someone who here who can tell me why is it taking so long? There, there's a lot of calculations that it has to do. You agree with that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now I want you to notice here what happened with number 47. You got a really strange value. Mr. Marriott, sir, can you tell me why I got a negative number suddenly? Okay, so I have an overflow error here. It's not so obvious. It's not like the machine even complained. It just went about its business. This is dangerous because if you ask for the answer for 48, you're going to think this is the right answer but it's not because an overflow has occurred. You see that, right? So one of the ways we can fix this, we can use something called big integer, which creates infinite precision arithmetic in Java. Unfortunately, big integer is a big complicated topic and it's not today's topic. So I'm going to use a different solution, which is to use a bigger integer. Does anybody know what the bigger integer? Now, integers in Java are 32 bits long. But there's another version of them which works a little bit better, longer. Does anybody know what that's called? It's called long. So we're going to go back and change all the integers to longs here. So now we have another version of this program which will handle slightly larger numbers. And since we're only going up to 50, I think this will work for us. Well, it's 64 bits. But if you think about it a little bit, the numbers that it can handle are it's not twice as large. It's 2 to the 32 times as large. So it's really, really big. And that's going to be big enough for our purposes. So we're going to run this puppy again. And you can see that it still slows down in the 40s, but now at least we don't get that overflow error anymore. I'm just going to give it a minute here so you can see a couple more of these pop up. And I forget where the error was last time. It was around 46? No, it was around 45, I think, right? 47? OK, let's just give it a minute here. OK, you can see that it's doing better now, but it's still slowing down a lot. So what we want to do this time is we want to find some much faster solution to this problem. And as I mentioned to you, one of the ways we can do that is we can memoize it or use dynamic programming. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a reservoir 
that's going to store all the old values. Now, your first thought might be to use an array list to do this. And if for this particular problem, you can use an array list. But recalls on an array list where the answers are sort of randomly spread out are going to be extremely painful. We need a data structure that can associate a question with an answer and have really fast recall. Does anybody know of a data structure like that, Mr. Maria? It's a map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a map. And because I want the map to be shared for all the members of this FIB class, I want to create a single map. OK, private static. So let's do that. So we're going to go private static map. And uh, who can tell me what will be the two data types on this map? Yes, sir. Uh, it could be an integer and long. I've decided to use longs for everything here. So let's just use long. Now, is this going to work, Mr. Ben? No. No, but you'll be happy and probably not surprised to learn that there is a uh, in, uh, object version of long called capital long. And we'll call this uh, map M. And uh, now I'm going to go equals new uh, uh, hash map long long. I probably don't even need that there like that. Now, normally, we initialize these maps and other things inside the constructor. How come I'm breaking that rule here and initializing it here? Who can tell me? Because static variables need to be initialized in the static area. And this is the static area, which is outside of any method. So what we want to do is we want to modify our fib method. And when they give us this end value, we want to look in the map to see if this key is already there. And if it is, we want to return the answer right away. And we only want to reach this part here if we're tackling it for the first time. So I want you to try and figure out what code I need to put up here to ask, did I see this question before? And if so, return the answer. Mr. Ajoji, sir, can you help me figure out how to write code here that asks the map, have I seen this N as a key before? And if so, return the answer that I have stored for it. OK, so I just go if M dot contains key and N here like this. And if it does contain the key, so if it does contain the key, I want to return the value. So that looks good. We also need to modify our base case because we need to load a couple of values into the map that are not going to be there initially. What would be the two values in the map that we should store as a base case? Bismillah. So I think that should take care of that. I'm going to show you a better alternative than this in a minute. But right now, we can just go with that for the time being. This will take care of storing the base cases in the map. Uh, and now what we need to do is when we come up with an answer, we need to store that in the map so that we can use it next time. So I'm going to modify this just slightly. And I'm going to say answer equals. And I'm going to put this in here. And then I'm going to return answer. But now I need to put another line of code in here, which will allow me to store it in the map. See if you can figure out what that line of code is. Um, and okay, you see how we are building this map so that it can basically help us later, uh, sorry, shortcut all the future queries about uh, n values for Fibonacci that are asked later. We want to store the answers as we go. I think that's basically everything we need. Let's run it and see if we get any speed up. Remember how slow it was when it got into the 40s, right? Let's see what happens this time. How long did it take? It's instant. Do you see how much faster it is now? Because I'm using this lookup trick. That's a really important trick. So that's how we memoize. Now I need to go over some small issues with you. My next question is this loading of the base case in the map. How many times am I running this line of code? It's for every query I'm loading it. Does that make sense? It's the same numbers I'm loading, right? So I don't need to load this here. So your first thought is going to be 
to take this out of here and move it into this static main method. So let's do that. We can go map m dot put, and I can say zero zero, and m dot put zero one. And there are two issues here. The first issue is that this is not going to compile. I'm guessing that's a surprise to you. Try and figure out why. Discuss with your partner. Mr. Alejandro, so these are integers. We need to convert them to longs. And I'm going to show you two ways to do that. So one way would be like this. And the other way would be like this. Both of those techniques will work. You've probably never seen this before, but if you look in the libraries for Java, this kind of syntax is there all the time. And so I want to introduce that to you here. Now, it turns out that putting these here is not a good idea for several reasons. The first of which is that this main method is not really part of this Fibonacci class. This main method will typically be located in some other class, some tester class. And it will typically be owned and written by some system tester who doesn't know anything about your Fibonacci class, whose only job is to test it. So putting this code in here doesn't actually make a lot of sense. So we're going to take it back out. What we really want to do is we want to run it when we initialize the class. And we want to run it only once. You see that the map is static. So putting it in the constructor for Fibonacci, that wouldn't make sense either. What we really want is some place where we can run it, where when the app first initializes, there's some piece of code that gets run, and we want to put it in there. Now, this is something I haven't shared with you before in CSA, but there is such a block of code. It's called the static block. I mentioned to you that this is the static area. If you want to access the static block, you just go like this. And you can put code in here that you want to run just once when the app first starts up. And that's the case here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in here the base cases that we want. OK, so when the Java virtual machine starts building your app and starts getting it running, what happens is that it basically goes through the static area and creates the static variables and runs the static code before it calls public static void main for the first time. So this is sort of run in the background before main is called. The important thing to understand is that this is only run once. Keep in mind that if you're using a debugger, and you restart the program, it will not rerun static. OK, it only runs once when you first start up. And you can see it's still instant. It gives you all 50 values instantly because of the speed. That's my little lesson for you for today on memoization.